Hello, it's Scott Manley here, and in our previous episode, we established that it is in fact possible to fly unmanned rockets by uh, carefully setting up your launch facility. However, we came up short in terms of endurance in that we could manage to get some awesome speeds at a sub suborbital levels, but we couldn't go all the way into orbit because those solid rocket boosters just couldn't couldn't get there. I mean, they actually had a lot of delta V, but of course you're inside the atmosphere and you're fighting the atmosphere all the way. So here we have a our first version of a uh, liquid fueled rocket. We're using three fuel tanks and an aero spike, and this probably has enough delta V on its own. The question is, will it be stable? <clears throat> Uh, will it even launch? Um, let me uh, go back and fix that. So yeah, let's uh, reattach that to the outside. <coughs> there we go. And I think my counterweight is not... Ah, uh, who cares. Let's uh, fix our launch order. And wait for the pad. Okay, we're ready to go. Fire. Wait for the physics to kick in. Okay, th maximum throttle, of course. Activate the engine and switch frame. Well, you see we're going up and uh, we're going up pretty straight. That's nice. <clears throat> the uh, aero spike is, of course, doing a great job. It is works at all at altitudes, unlike other rocket motors. You can see we're burning fuel in order down our tanks very quickly. I, I suspect that we are going to come up short for a reasonable orbital velocity here, simply because we're running this at 100% so that we don't get hit by the famous um, throttle bug which means that we're probably wasting a bit of fuel in the lower atmosphere. I think otherwise I, I'm pretty sure, yeah, I've demonstrated that it's possible to put uh, a three-tank, well, I guess that was a previous version, but you could put a three-tank rocket with a, an engine and a capsule into orbit. But uh, things have been changed and things are somewhat nerfed. Oh, now here's an interesting thing. We were stable in the early atmosphere, but now that we're getting high up, those fins are no longer stabilizing us. And things are just starting to rotate out of control. So even even if we had the Delta V, I think we're probably wasting it on <laughs> it's not being pointed the right direction. That is that is gonna be a problem. Hmm. We need some way to maintain uh, our orientation at altitude once the air stops working. Well that's a pretty good oh that's a pretty exceptional late range. That's practically an intercontinental ballistic missile there. I would certainly call that a success, but we need to figure out how to keep the thrust going in the right direction, maintain stability once we are above the effects of the atmosphere. Because, yep, that's us. We're going out the atmosphere. That is a record for an unmanned rocket. Well, at least it is in my game. I'm sure other people have accidentally launched unmanned rockets further than this. Yeah, let's uh, go back to the space center, and yeah, we don't need to quit this thing. It will eventually die on its own. Uh, it'd be nice to know where it landed, but I want to see what can we do here to make it better. Well, we first of all we could add more fuel. That's uh gonna make things easier. Maybe you know we get enough random motion that it works. Uh, yeah, let's just try launching it with more fuel and see what happens. Cause you know what, if it explodes, that'll be a result. Um, yeah, I mean, this is, a, this is interesting. There's absolutely no guidance at all. Even, even the, the V weapons, the V1 and V2, they had to have guidance computers. Oh, ah, okay. I was talking and I made a dumb mistake. I switched to the wrong person before um, I had launched. Let's uh, do that again. Uh, physics engine, physics engine. There we go. I got to remember to hit space twice before I change frames maximum thrust fire fire go oh wow that is cool uh hey we're still flying i i guess we took got advantage of uh we took advantage of the fuel for a few seconds so this should go a little further 
if it can remain stable. Uh, it, oh, it looks like it's lost one of its um, one of its fins as well. I don't think this will be stable once the atmosphere stops working on it, but we shall see. I mean, it's always kind of cool to watch what happens to these things, isn't it? Yeah, it's it's a spinning, not the way I would expect, but. Um, yeah, there's probably some physics behind that that I'm not really catching. Okay, we're getting up to like 9, 10 kilometers. The atmosphere is definitely getting thinner. And you can see that it's actually starting to wobble in some weird way. Uh, yeah, it's, see how it's rotating around? There's no fin on this side to, yeah, to slow it down or to, to offset the center of mass. So we're basically, we're getting pushed into this weird spin. Well... It looks pretty nonetheless. One of the biggest uh, Catherine wheels in the in the Kerbal system, I would say. Um, ah, dear. Okay, well, actually, I, I see that it's really stable in the spinning. See that? Maybe I have an idea. Maybe if we spin our rocket, uh, it will maintain its orientation once it gets into the upper atmosphere. Once uh, the air has stopped helping it. Well, it's not a bad result, but uh, it was a liquid rocket. Certainly got further than those um, than those solid-fueled rockets. Okay, yeah, let's uh, see. Yeah, we want to spin this. So the best way, I think, maybe we can spin it. Um, oh, no, I don't want to do that. Well, that's the other thing. I'm going to turn it so that we don't crash into the tower this time. Because that was rather embarrassing. Yeah, so let's um, adjust the fins. So what we want to do is, so you can rotate these slightly by holding shift when you're hitting the the ASDF keys. There we go. So I'm gonna I'm just rotating it just enough that the fins will catch it and induce a rotation. And so that should keep the craft stable regardless of whether the atmosphere is there or not. So let's see how this does. Get ready for launch, full power, and go, yes. So yeah, I was saying that the, the V2 and the V1, they actually had computers on there, on board. They were mechanical computers that worked as guidance systems. They basically would fire the rocket for a certain amount of time, uh, keep its orientation according to magnetic poles, and uh, hopefully not crash it until it reached its destination. It was pretty inaccurate, but you know, could you imagine building a mechanical computer? They were some smart cookies, even although they were bastards for dropping bombs on us. Well, the spinning certainly works. It certainly is more stable, but unfortunately it is arcing over. And I don't know if that is just luck of the draw, because it seems the other ones have been pretty good at going straight up, but this one is just you know, going full speed. I wonder, um, we're probably not even going to get a range record on this because we only got up to like four kilometers. Still, it'll be cool to watch this crash. Maybe it'll reach the 10 kilometer mark. Yay, 10 kilometers. Look at that come down with some great speed and ferocity. Casting. Oh, yes. I love it when bits come off and smash into the landscape separately. Okay, uh, I think we're going to try... Um, maybe we can... Well, yeah, we'll just go again with this, because let's see if that was a fluke. You see, as the rocket fires up, it flexes the whole system, and you can see that it wobbles, and it might just be that if I let go at the wrong time, that uh, the the in, the rotation is induced, and, and that carries over. So maybe I'm, it's just a fluke that I was getting straight ones, or just a fluke that I got a non-straight one. Let's see what happens. Well, um, it looks stable. But, yeah, I think... Hmm. I think the rotation kind of helps it. It keeps it straight, but it also encourages it to very slowly move over. We might get more range out of this. And uh, it will only be attacking the, the Kerbal Sea monsters instead, because it's going nicely out to sea. At least it's going the right way for a, a satellite launch. If only it would do this... Uh, at 30 kilometers, we could almost get an orbit out of this. Yeah, it's not even going to reach four kilometers up. Yeah. Okay. Well, uh, what else can we do with this? Um, let's try one more time. 
I'm, I'm not prepared to believe that it was just a fluke that we got a vertical. We get two verticals in a row. Let's go. Okay, where's this going? Uh, it's going that way. Yeah, you can definitely see that the timing of the second... Uh, timing of the second release makes a big difference. Oh, maybe if I get it timed just right, I can get it to go straight up and we can all be happy as we watch this thing shoot into the upper atmosphere. Uh, no, I don't want to release that one. Um, full throttle... And let's let it stabilize and then go. Um, well, it looks a little more stable. Maybe this will get up. Maybe this will get above ten kilometers. I'm, I'm. It's got a lot of acceleration on it, nonetheless. You know the, that that error spike is doing a pretty darn good job. Picking up altitude. Yeah, I definitely think we're going to beat our 3.4. Three, three, ah. 1, 2, 3, 4, 6. Come on, 4 kilometers. I want 4 kilometers with this thing. Okay, that's a record for a spin-stabilized rocket so far. Um, it just needs to not arc over until it's, like, above 15 kilometers. If only there was some way to fine-tune this. Yeah, well, um, I think this is an evolutionary dead end. We're not getting any better. I'm, I have a new idea. I'll show you in the next episode. Fly safe.